Thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you for holding this space. What a nice way to spend International Women's Day. Um, my name is Kate Taylor Martin, and I'm the owner and founder of Nut Bar um, and a uh, holistic nutritionist. Um, and when Julie and I were kind of talking about this idea of sustainable leadership, how I, you know, think I can provide value to the conversation uh, is really thinking about how to um, fuel ourselves. Uh, I think we can show up best in the world when we feel, you know, really nourished and full. And uh, for me, that's in a very literal sense uh, with food, obviously, as, as a holistic nutritionist. And I really see the power and potential of food on our overall health and well-being. And I think sometimes it's really easy to lose sight of that, especially in a group like this where we're busy, we're all kind of trying to balance life and feel great and find harmony. Uh, and sometimes what we eat falls by the wayside. Um, it's been a really busy couple of months for me in particular. I had um, a daughter six months ago and we opened two new locations, this one included within that time. And I've realized kind of uh, in reflecting on this time period that it's okay if things aren't perfect. And I think sometimes it's hard if somebody gives a talk like this and it's like, you know, we all need to be, um, you know, vegans eating organic food um, that comes from 100 kilometers of where you live. Uh, that's not necessarily sustainable in this climate that we live in. Uh, and so I've really tried to kind of pare it down to five, hopefully very easy, takeaway tips for you so that you can leave today feeling like you've gotten some information that's empowered you to make healthier choices that really, I promise you, will have an incredibly profound effect on how you show up in the world for yourself and therefore how you show up in the world for other people. So the first one uh, is to, and I should say, um, feel free obviously to take notes, but I'll send a summary handout to Julian so you can really just listen to what I'm saying and, and I'll follow up with what you need to know. So the first one is to incorporate adaptogens. Um, and I should say some of the things I talk about today that are superfoods, adaptogens and medicinal mushrooms. And I think superfoods has become a bit of a gimmicky word, but I always like to say they're really anything but a trend. We're actually, you know, superfoods have been used for thousands and thousands of years, and we're kind of paring it back down to um, how nature intended us to eat and really looking to food in its most real, whole, nutrient-dense um, form. So I always say chia seeds that feel like they've just kind of appeared out of nowhere. Um, the ancient Aztecs used to use chia seeds to fuel their runners for long distance runs. Um, so it's become a bit of a buzzword, but I like to sort of pare it down and just really appreciate how these foods have fueled human beings for thousands of years. So the first one is adaptogens. And adaptogens are healing plants that help our body's natural ability to adapt to stress. And, um, you know, stress right now really is the disease of our times, I guess, aside from coronavirus, and I probably shouldn't make a joke about coronavirus. <laughs> um, but stress really is the, the disease of our times, and I, I always like to sort of meditate on that for a second and how stress is operating in, in our worlds right now. Stress used to be really acute. Um, you know, in kind of caveman times, if you were being chased by a bear, you'd elicit this physiological response to be able to run away from a bear. Uh, there are so many stresses right now that are wreaking havoc on our body, and we don't differentiate between types of stress. So that kind of huge physiolog physiological response that we used to have to elicit to running away from a bear, that's happening if we're stuck in traffic or sending an email that's causing us a little bit of panic or you know, slathering toxins on our skin or eating foods that are full of pesticides or nose pollu no noise pollution or toxic friendships. Um, there's so much stress in our life right now and our bodies can't handle it. Um, and so adaptogens, these beautiful healing plants that help our body's natural ability to adapt to stress are, is a really easy way for us all to incorporate into our diet that can have a really profound effect on how we're, on how we're feeling. To be an adaptogen, um, herbs have to be non-toxic to the body's physiological function, and they offer widespread support. So sometimes people liken adaptogens to a thermostat um, because of their unique ability to adapt according to the specific need of the body. So in a similar way that, you know, um, turning a temperature up in a room, or sorry, adjusting the ther thermostat to a, a certain temperature, the, um, it's gonna elicit a different temperature based on what it needs. Adaptogens do that for the body. So the correct response 
is triggered according to the body's specific, to specific needs. Um, so it can possess um, seemingly opposing qualities. It can be either relaxing or stimulating depending on what your body needs to op operate in an equilibrium. There are lots of different kinds of adaptogens, so reishi, ashwagandha, um, astragalus, holy basil, it probably sounds like I'm talking a different language. Um, but the best way, you're probably thinking, how can I kind of take these day to day? The best way I find is in a tea. Teas are just really beautiful ways to be able to take them. You can kind of have that throughout your day or in a tincture format that you can add to something that you're already having. So even your smoothie or you know, your morning matcha. Um, so I'll link to some brands that I like, um, not affiliated with any, just ones that I've done a lot of research on. Um, and again, brewing yourself an adaptogenic tea. If you're kind of doing that you know, nightly, that over time has a really powerful effect. And that's kind of what I wanna say today, that um, there's two things. One is doing something, uh, a small thing every day can have a great impact. And, and that's when we're talking about adding something in, but also taking away. So something that you're doing that's probably not as health promoting and it's a small thing, but we're doing it every single day. You know, I always say, I'll talk about coffee in a second, but like adding, um, sugar to your coffee every morning. It's probably a little bit of sugar, it's not a lot, but when you're doing that every single morning, these things really um, form over time and become um, kind of the foundation of who we are and, and how we feel. So the first is to incorporate adaptogens. The second point is uh, to coffee or not to coffee. So don't worry, I feel like everyone is like, oh my God. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna tell you not to drink coffee. I also own a healthy coffee shop concept, so um, I'm mindful of that. But what I really want you to do, I wanna intercept your daily coffee habit. I think that coffee is something that's just super habitual for people. It's sort of a ritual. We get into these routines and we do the same thing every single day. And I just wanna ask you to really um, tune into how that's making you feel. Um, when we're drinking coffee first thing in the morning, we're often breaking our fast. So that's the first thing we're having after not eating all night. Our body's in a dehydrated state and coffee's putting us in a further dehydrated, dehydrated state. So even something as simple as having lemon water, um, with fresh lemon, uh, before your coffee for kind of half an hour and letting that kickstart your metabolism, just start your body going for the day in a really nourishing way can have a, a really powerful effect. Uh, when I was in nutrition school, that kind of came up, the idea of having lemon water first thing in the morning on an empty stomach came up over and over and over again. And some of our teachers went even as far to say, that's the single best thing you can do for your health. So if you do nothing else or nothing else kind of sticks today, but tomorrow morning you start your day first thing, empty stomach with some fresh lemon and water, um, that alone has a really incredible ability to just, um, to just re, re, uh, kickstart your system. Also make sure that you rinse your teeth after with water without lemon. Uh, I had a bit of a dental situation, so um, it can wear away at the enamel, enamel on your teeth if you leave that uh, lemon residue. I also ask you to kind of think about your coffee habit. So a lot of us just kind of blindly go, let's say to Starbucks every day because it's on the corner, it's become part of our habit. We get a um, grande drip coffee every day. So a drip coffee has about 330 milligrams of caffeine, whereas an Americano has 75. So if you're somebody that's getting two drip coffees every single day, that's a lot of coffee and that's really jittery energy for most people. So even being able to kind of interrupt that habit and say, I love my coffee in the morning, it makes me feel great, to be able to have that and then something different in the afternoon or even having an Americano first thing in the morning instead of a drip coffee, that's a really, really different um, amount of caffeine that you're consuming every single day. Another option instead of coffee is matcha. Do we all know what matcha is? I feel like as soon as Starbucks introduced matcha, it's just like out in the world. Um, so matcha is green tea leaves that have actually been ground up. So we know that green tea is really high in antioxidants. Uh, we're just drinking the uh, water that's been steeped in the green tea leaves. So matcha, we're actually consuming the green tea leaves. So it has much, much higher antioxidant content than green tea. And the best thing about matcha is that it provides a sustained release of jitter-free energy. So pay attention to how coffee is making you feel. If you kind of get that nervousness, that jittery, first of all, that's continuing to stress um, your adrenal glands. And I talk about like trying to manage stress already as it is. Coffee for a lot of people makes them, um, puts them in kind of a further exhausted state. And so even um, if you can switch to matcha, you're still getting caffeine, but it's that sustained release of jitter-free energy. 
Um, and if you're somebody that just kind of gets a coffee because you like the morning ritual of something hot, um, elixirs are coming into popularity and they can be really powerful and extremely nourishing. So an elixir, um, you can just add kind of all these potions into it. Um, one that I love to make at home is nut milk, um, from not far because it's the best, but um, <laughs> whatever you want, <laughs> I guess. Um, coconut oil is great in a morning elixir because coconut oil is a medium chain triglyceride, so it's actually not stored as fat, it's burned as fuel, and it's great for kickstarting your metabolism first thing in the morning and is quite satiating. So I put some coconut in, oil in there, um, an adaptogen, some medicinal mushrooms, which I'll talk about, uh, cinnamon, which is really blood sugar balancing. Instead of coffee, you can e use something called Dandy Blend, and I'll link to all of these, but Dandy Blend's an amazing co herbal coffee alternative. Um, so it's roasted chicory root and barley root, and it's delicious and nourishing and incredible and tastes like you're having a coffee. But again, if you're somebody that doesn't react well with coffee and you're having it every day, it's a really great substitute. Um, so the first one was adaptogens. The second is just asking you to sort of examine your coffee habit, and I think that's probably particular relevant, rel particularly relevant to this group. Um, and then the third is to take care of your gut. So I think that um, the importance of the gut is really underemphasized in, in the Western world. And something that's really um, powerful to note is that 80% of the health of our immune system is connected to the health of our gut. And I think that talking about the immune system is kind of an unsexy thing. It's like people love knowing like, what's good for my skin? What's good for my hair? What's good for my nails? But really, if we have a compromised immune system or an immune system that's not functioning optimally, um, what, what do we have? So looking to these things that really provide a solid immune support is, is essential. Um, and really ensuring the health of our gut is directly correlated to those two. So how do we uh, maintain a healthy gut? Um, First of all, it's not to react to the symptoms, which I think is kind of a problem of the Western world often. If we have a, you know, indigestion, we're very quick to take a Tums. If we have a stomach ache, we're very quickly to treat the symptom versus looking at the root cause. What's actually causing our stomach to feel like that? Um, I think that there are a few really easy things that we can do to have a profound effect on our gut, which in turn helps our immune system and helps us function more optimally. The first is to chew your food. And I know that sounds really rudimentary, but Again, if you go home tonight, I want you to think about this when you're eating your dinner. How many times do you chew a bite that goes into your mouth? Um, I bet you it's you know two or three times. The goal is that when you swallow your food, it should be completely unrecognizable from when it went into your mouth. Our stomach doesn't have teeth, so it can't break down the food once it's in your stomach. Um, and in order to maximize the surface area so that nutrients can be absorbed, we really want to make sure that it's as broken down as possible by the time we swallow it. It's also just a really nice um, practice to get into being really mindful of when you're eating and, and how it's making you feel and making that a bit of a ritual. So pay attention to please um, chew your food. And also on the chewing food, don't drink water while you're chewing. Don't dilute your digestive enzymes with water in your mouth. There's a very delicate balance of digestive enzymes and a lot of us um, dilute that by taking a, a drink of water as you're eating. Um, the second is to drink more water, just not when you're eating. So the first place that our kidneys signal to pull water from is our large intestine. Uh, and so if we're dehydrated and it's pulling water from our large intestine, that's leaving us in a um, compromised position and leading to constipation. And um, I'm gonna spare you guys, usually I have a slide that says what your poo says about you, um, which is really fun when I go into like corporate talks and everybody's mortified. Um, but I'm gonna say this because looking at your poo really is the best way to see how our system is functioning. It's like a very real tangible way to say something is not working well inside or something is well. It's a beautiful S-shaped poo that's the perfect brown color. Um, and so I really ask you to pay attention to how your stomach is operating, how it's making you feel, how your bowel movements are, because that's a direct indication of your gut health, which is a direct indication of your immune health. Um, I know a lot of people talk about drinking water and there's so many different messages. It's like have 10 cups a day of water and then people say, well, no, you don't have to because vegetables and fruits contain a lot of water. I, can, I find it overwhelming. I think the best thing to do since you're looking in the toilet bowl anyway is to look at the color of your pee. It should not be super saturated and super yellow. That means you're dehydrated. And it also shouldn't be too white. That means that, which is a thing that you can be drinking too much water. So you kind of want a nice light yellow. Um, 
The third is to eat more fiber-rich foods. I think a lot of us know that. I'm not talking about refined carbs. I'm talking about really good complex carbohydrates because they literally scrub out your large intestine as they're moving through your body. And so they're pulling toxins with them. So focusing on real complex carbohydrates is, is really important for gut health. The fourth is to reduce stress. Uh, and I talked about stress, but the point that I want to make here is that, um, again, if we're thinking about running away from a bear and what our body would need to elicit that physiological response, we're not focusing on good digestion. So anything that's non-essential to being able to prepare for running away from a bear is going to be shut off. So if you're eating in a stressful state and you're kind of like responding to emails or texting somebody and eating and you, know, you can feel your heart racing and you get up, you can feel that lump in your stomach because nothing's digested. We're not having that kind of really important cascade of the digestive enzymes because your body thinks you're running away from a bear and everything is, is shut off. So please make sure that you're eating in a really non-stressed out state. And the best way to get into that state is deep breaths in and deep breaths out. And I use the bear, bear analogy because I, I think it kind of helps create an image. But if you're able to take really deep breaths in for five seconds and really deep breaths out, your body switches from that kind of fight or flight mode into rest and digest because it says, oh, they're, they're able to kind of sit and relax and take deep breaths in and deep breaths out. Clearly, I'm not in danger. I'm able to switch over to that. So please be mindful of that while you're eating. And the fifth is just to either take a probiotic or be really um, mindful about eating more fermented foods. We, we just, in general, don't eat enough fermented foods and it's so important for our gut health. So sauerkraut and kimchi, um, kombucha, all of these things. Um, and you know, I'm not gonna tell everybody to kind of take, take a supplement, but probiotics for most people are needed if we're not taking a lot of fermented foods. Uh, the fourth is medicinal mushrooms. So I am weirdly obsessed with medicinal mushrooms. I think that they are just the most incredibly powerful, beautiful things on our planet. There's so many uses for them, but um, in a medicinal sense, they've been used for more than 4,000 years in, in many traditional um, um, cultures for their, the treatment and prevention of disease. So not just kind of what we're talking about of like optimizing and feeling better, but actually the treatment and prevention of disease. Um, there are four that I'm gonna just talk really quickly about. Um, shaga, lion's mane, reishi, and cordyceps. Um, shaga, I worked with a master herbalist to create a lot of the drinks on the Nut Bar menu and we got in this amazing conversation about shaga. And he was kind of saying like, I don't understand how people aren't chugging this. It's, it's the most powerful antioxidant on the planet. Um, we talk a lot about antioxidants as sort of this buzzword, but antioxidants are neutralizing the damage that free radicals are doing to our cells. So wherever we can, we want to get antioxidants. So there's an ORAC scale that measures antioxidant content. We always talk about blueberries are so high in antioxidants. Blueberries are an 8,000 and chaga is 146,000. So it's just this like unbelievable thing and for whatever reason, you know, it hasn't kind of been ingrained into our day-to-day -day habits. So shaga is amazing for vitality, for wellness, for just general feelings of well-being and energy. Um, it has incredible anti-cancer properties. It's just something that all of us should be taking every day. Uh, reishi is one of the most potent adaptogens in the world. Reishi um, is the queen of the mushroom, so it really supports our body's ability to cope with stress. Cordyceps is amazing for energy, so cordyceps just gives us this natural boost. It's amazing for pre- and post-workout. And lion's mane is one of the um, world's most um, potent nootropics, so it's incredible for brain health. And the amazing thing about medicinal mushrooms, because they're so smart, is that they have this synergistic effect, so they talk to each other. And so they say that the more you take, like the more different kinds, the more powerful they are in combination with one another. They actually highlight each other's properties. So you don't have to be worried about, you know, just kind of taking one and you shouldn't take the other. It's really good to, to stack them onto each other. And again, I, I'm happy to link to a few brands. And the last thing I want to say is, um, which I've touched on in a few different ways, is pay attention to how food makes you feel. And um, I think many times we've lost sight of this really beautiful and intuitive connection between how, how the food we're putting in our body makes us feel. And I think if we kind of tune into that, that's the best guide for eating well. Um, 
one diet certainly does not work for everybody and it also doesn't work for the same person over their lifespan. I used to be the type of person where the second I woke up I had to have breakfast. Intermittent fasting never to, would have worked for me and I've actually found lately I, I can't eat in the morning and I feel so great when I'm kind of maximizing that intermittent fasting window. Um, something like food combining. Food combining principles are amazing. They talk about how you shouldn't have you should only have fruit at the beginning of the meal because fruit digests really quickly. So I don't know if you guys have ever found this, but if you eat fruit for dessert, rarely does it sit well because that's stacked on top of a heavy meal. And so that's kind of fermenting and digesting and causing gas and bloating and just not, not feeling our best. Um, when I talk about coffee, pay attention to how it makes you feel and, and make adjustments if you're not feeling that it's um, suiting you. So um, I think that that's a really just good reminder for us all. So just in summary, it was the adaptogens, wherever we can in the stressful world and the stressful life that we're leading, turn to these beautiful um, herbs and plant medicines who will support us in that. The second is kind of to coffee or not to coffee and how can we adjust that habit. The third is to just take care of our gut. The health of our gut cannot be underemphasized. Um, it's 80% of the health of our immune system. The fourth is medicinal mushrooms. And the fifth is just pay attention to how you feel. So thank you. Mm -hmm.